Good day, fellow scientists and other curious minds. Today's video is on crossing yeast, so this is a natural mating mechanism that will produce new gene combinations. So that can allow us to test if two mutations coming together will cause lethality, or if we want to introduce a purification system or some other reporter into our strains. Any new genotypes we get can be saved in a permanent stock solution or used in another cross or other future experiments. Day 1. Getting out strains. Thaw some stock strains from the minus 80. Start any good experiment by getting out plates. Always carefully label your plates. Scrape a small amount of frozen cells out of the tube and streak them onto the plate. Allow the cells to recover and grow at 30 degrees. Day 2. Mating. Start the cross by mating cells. Haploid A and alpha cells will come together to form a diploid. Add a small volume of YPD to each tube. Pick a small bit of the A strain up with a toothpick and swish it around in the tube. Repeat with the alpha strain in the same tube. Pipette to further mix the strains, then spot the volume onto YPD. Allow the spot to soak in and the cells to mate overnight at 25 degrees. Day 3. Diploid Selection. Isolating cells that have successfully mated. Add custom selection media required for your experiment. Allow any amino acid or drug supplements to soak into the plate. Streak for singles, taking cells from the YPD mating patch to the selection media. Allow the diploids to grow and form single colonies at 30 degrees. Day 4. Streaking cells to sporulation media. Take selected diploids and patch onto minimal media. Use three toothpicks when streaking for singles. Avoid crossover into previous streaks or trying to use one toothpick. Cells become diluted with each streak and should leave singles. Pick from a single diploid colony and patch onto SPO media.
allow cells to sporulate for two to three days at 25 degrees. Day five, tetrad dissection. Separate four tetrads from each spore to select for desired gene combinations. Break down the yeast spore wall, known as the ascus, using zymolase. Zymolase is a snail gut enzyme that breaks down glucose polymer bonds found in the ascus. Add 50 microliters of zymolase to each tube. Scrape up a small amount of spores from the plate and swish in the tube. Quench the reaction after 10 minutes using water. Invert a few times to mix, as opposed to vortexing. Drip some of the liquid down the center of a YPD plate. Allow the media to dry on the plate for a few minutes before heading to the microscope. Adjust the microscope and dissection needle accordingly. Position the dried line of cells at the center of the field of view. Adjust the height of the needle to a comfortable range just below the plate.
allow freshly dissected haploid cells to grow at 30 degrees for one to two days. Day six, replica plating. Creating a copy of the dissection plate onto various selection media. Gather all the plates required to genotype the dissected strains. Place a sterile felt over the replica block. Place the dissection plate face down onto the felt. Hardly any pressure is required to transfer the yeast cells to the felt. Gently remove the dissection plate. Place a fresh selection plate on top of the replica block. Remove and repeat as many times as required. You can replica plate using the same felt to several other plates. Always do an initial master replica to YPD as a backup. Mating type determination requires two felts for each replica plate. First felt transfers the A or alpha lawn. The second felt transfers the dissections. Let the mating plates grow at 25 degrees. All other selection media is fine to grow at 30 degrees. Day 7, scoring dissections. Genotype strains resulting from the cross. looking for 2-2 two two segregation for any given row of dissections. YPD plate confirms only 4 spores are growing in each lane and any deviation voids that row. As you can see I skipped a row between 3 and 4 that only had 3 viable spores. Mark down the growth patterns of each selection plate. For example, row 2 only has growth for spore B and D on the selective media. Row 3 shows a different growth pattern where spores A and B are viable. Look for a positive result, a strain that carries all the markers of interest. Patch positive strains onto fresh media and allow them to grow. Grow strains until there is enough to scrape off the plate.
Day 8, Freezing Strains, Creating a Permanent Stock of the New Yeast Strain. Carefully label freezer tubes with database information. Mix YPD and glycerol one to one, ensuring everything is sterile. Scoop a healthy amount of yeast from the patch and swish in the freezer tube. Vortex the tube to make stock solution homogeneous. Store in the minus 80.